Hello everyone, I want to do a watercolour project today for the Let's Get Arty Challenge in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. And for anybody that wants to follow along with this challenge, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group in the description box below, so please do feel free to come along, uh, come along and join us. Just be aware that it's a prompt-related group, so only um, posts that are related to our prompts are permitted. Now, I'm going to start off by using some brushes to create a couple of backgrounds. Um, I've got here for the first one emerald green lemon ultramarine blue and leaf green and I've got two pieces of watercolor paper that measures five inches by four inches this is Strathmore 190 GSM watercolor paper and this is cold pressed meaning that um, it's textured and as you can see I've applied some washi tape around the edges I've just used this which I know is um, a Christmassy themed one with stars on it I just wanted something really Really thin um, just to give me a nice crisp border so pop one aside because I just want to start off with one of them now the idea is with with brushos they come in these little tubs like this and you punch a hole small hole using a pin in the top to release some of the crystal powders these are made up of crystal powders and you really only need a small hole because a little of this stuff goes a long way it's really effective and it's multi-tonal as well so I'm going to start off by tapping on some of the emerald green. You don't need very much of this. And then I'm going to work my way up. So the lemon um, at the bottom, let me just make sure that my washi tape is firmly down. Then the leaf green, we'll add a layer of that. And then some ultramarine blue, perhaps a bit more of the emerald at the top like this and then I'm going to spray this I've just got um, a spray bottle of water and you'll see the magic um, happen I don't want too much water I've also got um, a jar of water as well and a watercolour brush I'm just going to wet my brush and then tap off most of that um, water you don't want this to be too wet now you can see that the crystals in their own right um, give you a really beautiful pattern but I want to blend mine out to create myself um, a sort of gradient um, background so I'm just going to use my watercolour brush to go all the way down and just look at these beautiful colours mingle. Isn't that pretty? Let's just go go up there like, like this. I'm going to go over it again. I don't want this to be too, too wet. Let's try and blend that out just a, a little bit more. And I think I'm happy with that. Now I just want to create some texture using some bleach. Um, some of you might remember me doing this um, last year. We did watercolour um, uh, techniques um, using different things like salt and, and bleach. So I'm just going to apply a small amount of bleach to my background. Be really careful with this. You don't want to ruin your clothes. But just look at the pretty pattern that I'm getting. Let's see if I can just get... A little bit more bleach at the top and this will only work and um, activate whilst your watercolour is is wet. Let's see what happens if I just tap the brush on and you want to use an old paintbrush as well for this because um, you know it will ruin your good paintbrushes if you if you're not careful and you you, you do want to give this a, a good rinse afterwards. So I think that will do fine. Let's add a couple more at the at the bottom if I can yep you see and you can see it I'm um, activating don't overdo it Nina and I think I'm just going to leave it um, at that and set that off to one side to dry now for this next one I just want to use two colors I want to use leaf green and lemon I'm going to start off by adding some of the lemon just at the top and the bottom of this this watercolor paper so just sprinkle sprinkle a little bit on um, as you can see that you know it looks as if hardly anything is coming out of this but as I've said a little goes a long way so we'll have some of the um, leaf green in the middle again I'm just going to spray using my, my water bottle so I'm just going to spread spread this out and work work my way, work my way up. Let's see if we can get ourselves a really 
nice gradient. Um, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of the emerald green at the top of that as well. Um, it's a little bit too, too pale and yellow. Again, I'm just using my piece of kitchen towel. Yeah, you see, I like, I like that better. So I want one with more blue tones and one with more yellow and um, and green tones, which I think I've managed to achieve. Let's put a little bit more of the lemon um, on here. And I just love the fact that this is multi-tonal. So you just get, you know, lots of different variations of the colour um, in this. It's just really, really pretty. There we are. And whilst that's still wet, um, bring in my old tatty paintbrush and let's tap on some of the bleach again. And what I want to do is a couple of um, wildflower paintings, but as I've said, I just want one in more blue tones and one um, in greens and, and yellows. So if I bring the other one in, you can see the difference here. Once this is still wet, I want to add some yellow using my pretty excellent watercolour palette. Um, this is by um, Paul Rubens. This is a fantastic budget watercolour palette. So we'll just add a small amount of yellow here and I'm just going to try and get some splatters just at the bottom of my, my painting like, like that. Um, I'm going to bring back the other one as well and let's do the same with this one here. Let me just make sure that um, the washi tape um, is firmly down. Let's make sure this is nice and fluid and liquidy. Is that a word? Liquid. <laughs> And I'm just going to set these two off to one side just for them to, to dry. My backgrounds are now dry, so they're ready for me to um, work on them. So let me just move those out of the way whilst I mix up some paint. I've just got um, a little palette here. Let's use the um, larger paintbrush. And I've wet some of this beautiful um, olive type, type green. So I'm just going to put some of this into my well. Just make sure I've got um, enough of, of that. Rinse off my brush, add a bit more, bit more water. That should be um, enough. I also want to um, add some of this darker, darker green here. So we've got sort of like an olive green and maybe a hunter's green, I would say this probably um, is. Let's add a little bit more, bit more of that. We could maybe even mix the two colours together just to make that um, a bit more yellowy. Yeah, you see, that's better. It's slightly darker, but um, but I like that um, better. I also want to add some of this lighter, lighter green here as well. So just uh, put... I've obviously used a paintbrush with some loose hairs at some stage because I can see them in my paint. These are really nice um, paintbrushes, I think. This is a set that I got from Amazon called um, Fumui. Um, comes in a beautiful box. Let me just show you. Hang on one second. This is the box that it, um, it comes in. So Fumui Artist Brushes, and I'll leave the link to this in the description box below. You know, I wasn't sent this um, or it's not sponsored or anything. It was one that um, I purchased myself, but I've used these for quite a few months now and I really, I really like them. So there we go. We've got three different shades um, of green that we can use. Let's start off using this one first. And again, I'm just going to make sure that that washi tape is, is pressed down. It's starting to lift, but, you know, it's OK. And I've got um, a couple of different paint brushes. Um, I've got the Fumui one, number two and number zero, and a couple of really um, small fine liner pens from Arteza as well. Let's start off with one of the really fine brushes. Let's start off with the Fumui um, number zero. And I'll start off with the medium green. And what I want to do is just hold my paintbrush really loosely and quite high up um, on the barrel. And I just want to paint some fine lines like, like this. 
I want to cross some of them um, over. In fact, let's try an even finer paintbrush and see, see how we get on with that. I don't want these to be too thick. Yeah, you see, that's, that's good. Try not to over, overthink it. Let's try some darker ones as well. Just to add some um, variety. And these are forming the stems of my, my wildflowers. It's like grass, isn't it? Really easy to do. Any of you can, can do this. Real beginner's um, project. I want some slightly um, thicker ones at the, at the bottom. Um, let's go for the darker colour again. Some shorter, shorter ones. And I'm achieving these by just pressing slightly um, harder, but it's sort of like um, a flicking action. And I just want to add some slightly darker stems in here as as well. So I've just used this one with the next um, green along, which is a slightly darker shade. Yeah, that's what I was um, I was after. And I think one maybe over over here as well. That will do fine. I don't want to um, completely over overdo it. Now for this blue one, I'm just adding some of this gorgeous green here to my my well. So we'll have have some of that, and some some of the yellow ochre colour as well next to it. We'll add some of some of that one as well. You can maybe add that to the well. And then I'm going to add some of that gorgeous dark green here to this one, just to darken, darken that. So there we are, just so that um, we've got um, a bit of variety and it's not completely the same as this one, this one here. So bring in my paintbrush. Let's start off with, in fact, no, I'm going to use the fine liner one again. And I'm just going to start off by using the really dark colour first. And just repeat the same process as I did with the previous card. Now, because we've got lots of blue in the background, I'm just adding a little bit of Payne's, Payne's Grey into this one, which I think works beautifully and ties the blue into the into the background. So we can add some of these as well. Not too many. And I'm just working directly out of the um, tin for, the, for this. And I think that's um, enough. The backgrounds are pretty much dry now and I want to peel the tape off before I do anything else. Now to make it easier to peel off, I'm just going to heat it up with my heat tool and hopefully I've got um, a nice crisp edge, which it looks as though I have. I can always touch it up um, where necessary. That looks pretty good and just look how lovely that looks now that um, the tape is off. I'll do the same with, um, with this one here. Let's reveal it in front of you because I think that's the most satisfying um, part. <laughs> So there we have it. Aren't those gorgeous? Which one do you like the best so far? Really happy with those. Let me just make sure that I am in camera shot. Aren't they gorgeous? To start off with the green one first, and I'm using my yellow paint again. I'm using the tiniest um, brush from the Arteza Fine Liner Brushes. These are really handy to have um, in your stash. And what I want to do is just add the illusion of some, some yellow flowers. Now, I did a video um, last year with artist trading cards and I used this technique and I've always wanted to do it on a slightly larger scale. I think it's very, very effective. So just adding a few yellow flowers, not too many. 
don't overthink where you're putting them, Nina, either. The hardest thing is trying not to, to overthink where they where they go. Just trying to balance them, uh, balance them out a, a, just a little bit. Let's have another one here as well. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Does that look balanced? I also want to add some white and I'm going to use gouache um, for that. So I'm just going to put a really small amount of gouache out um, just onto this, this palette here. Only a small amount because I don't want to, to waste it. Let me just clean my brush off because I've managed to get gouache um, all up the ferrule of my brush. Let me just um, tidy that up a little bit. Now, gouache, as we know, needs watering down. Um, otherwise, it's just too thick to, to work with. You don't need too much water, but, you know, you do need to make it into a slightly thinner consistency. And then I'm just going to add some white flowers as well in the same way. Now, I've let the yellow dry just a little bit because I didn't want to um, smudge the flowers that I've already put down. And I'm just giving the illusion here of wild, wild flowers. And of course, if we go over the edge, it doesn't matter with this because it's white anyway, so you won't see it. So, you know, zero harm done. Maybe have some up here as well. How pretty does that look? It's just subtly beautiful, isn't it? And maybe one over here as well, just to balance balance the composition out. And as a last finishing touch, I'm just going to add some more of that beautiful dark green. Let me just move the gouache out of the way. Again, just working directly out of the palette. And I'm just going to add, let me just um, clean off my, my ferrule just so that I don't get um, a drip. Let's just add a tiny dot here. Because I'm using such a small amount of paint, it's drying very, very quickly. And I think we'll add a slightly paler green. Let's go for this, this shade here, just on the, on the white. Just so that the white ones are a little bit more subtle. It makes it easier as well to see, see where they are to leave that one there exactly as it is and let's work on the bluey purpley one um, love how this one looks now because of the um, more purple and blue tones in this um, I want to use some different colors so let's have a look and see um, what we can do with this one with this one here now you see we could use some of this um, purple to add some, some flowers. Let's go for the purple. So where's my little tiny brush um, again, my little stubby one. So I've just added some water to this purple, purple here. And let's add a few, a few of these. Yeah, you see, I like that. That's, um, that's a good color combination. And this one has got more of a silhouette feel to it as well. I could add some some yellow to this as well, you know. I might do that because we've got the yellow spatter, spatters in the background. Let's add the purple first. And I might add um, just a touch of white um, to the stems on these. I don't know. Or I might go for green. I haven't decided yet. But I just want to add some of the the purple and again i'm just going to try my absolute hardest not to go over overboard with this i don't want to overdo it i like it to i think this you know needs to be quite subtle so i've added a few more of the purple flowers i've decided i'm not going to um, add any any yellow but i do want to add some some white which i think will brighten it on this slightly um darker background Let's try not to um, get my fingers in this and spoil it. Let's just try and add a few of 
few of these, try and balance them um, out a bit. These little paintings are finished for the time being and I haven't decided how I'm going to use them as yet. Um, but just to give you a couple of ideas, I think these would make the most beautiful card toppers um, with some complimentary paper or cardstock behind them. Um, craft cardstock I think would look lovely or even another piece of white. Um, they'd also look absolutely beautiful as um, an embellishment for your journal as well. I can also see these being mounted onto a piece of fabric or even you know frayed frayed burlap they'd look absolutely beautiful perhaps with a little bit of stitching around the edges so I'm just going to leave these as they are for the time being and ponder take my time to decide how I want to use them but you know I hope it's given you some ideas and some inspiration and that you've enjoyed today's video this is one of several wildflower videos that I've made and I'll leave the link to the others in the description box below in case you want more ideas. I've done some with acrylic paint, some with gouache. Um, there's all kinds of ideas on my channel and as I've said I'll leave links to the other videos in the description box below for anybody who's interested. They are all beginner level so you know I don't want anybody to feel intimidated. Um, beginners can certainly have a go at this um, and I think you've, you'd achieve really good results. I'm leaving the video here but as I said at the beginning of the video for anybody who wants to follow along with our prompts and challenges I'll leave the link to the Mixed Media Emporium in the description box below um, you can have a go at the challenges and share them in our Facebook group if you want to um, but if you've enjoyed today's video as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below but most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now